And good day, everybody, and welcome to The Professors. I'm Paul Fabrizio. I'm Don Frazier, and with us today is Alan Withers. And we're coming to you from McMurray University, and we're delighted to have the Dean of Students with us. The Dean of Students. Yeah, dun, Alan dun, dun, Withers. Dun. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, be the guy I would dodge <laughs> when I was a student. Yeah, That's where most people like to avoid the Dean of Students, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you sort of have a bad reputation just going into the job. I mean... <laughs> The position, anyway. Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, we're delighted you're here. And today we're going to learn all about Dean of Students and why are you so feared? And sh is that uh, fear legitimate? And why we have Deans of Students. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, back in my day, it was a Dean of Men. And yes, then we had a Dean right. of Women. They were separated. They were separated. You would have, yeah, you would have a Dean for the female students, a Dean for the male students, and never the twain should meet. Was that uh, because, that, why, you know, why is it? Is that because of in loco parentis? Or? In loco parentis, I think at that time, uh, um, parents and, and others uh, felt that that's the best way to handle uh, young adults is on in a gender-specified uh, way. But times have changed, and uh, so it's a different world now. <laughs> it's mixed it up together. Now, you're yeah. going to have to explain in loco parentis. I was about to say, don't you like it when I just throw out casual Latin? Mm, yeah, right, no, right. I'm so impressed. That's what we do over in the history world. Yeah, so in loco parentis is a common term when you're talking about working with the college and university students, and, and, and often it harkens back to the way things used to be, and that is in place of the parent. And that is um, the, uh, the university is taking on the... The role of the parent in the, in the case of its students. Now, some uh, some institutions are, would identify more closely with that than others. A smaller private institution, maybe like McMurray, mm -hmm. um, would have more of a personal attention that it can uh, can devote to students, and that's more like a parental role. But if you've got a large major research university with sixty thousand students, yeah. yes, yeah. it's a different kind of thing. And, and loco parentis maybe wouldn't be a term you would apply to the kind of relationship that you have. Yeah, you're lucky if you know with, with your students. A few of the students. Yeah, so we're more right. in loco <laughs> yes. in our parentheses. <laughs> there you go. So, Alan, exactly. tell us, why don't you tell us about yourself? How does one decide to become a dean of students? I mean, did you have yeah. issues when you were in college or something? <laughs> well, right, and, right. And you're acting out Down now. Down you were busted for that stuff in your dorm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I like, what I like to say uh, when people ask me about that is, is, uh, is I had such a good time in college that I didn't want to leave. And, <laughs> and so, so now, thirty years later, so thirty you years haven't later, left. I'm still in college, and uh, I, uh, my background is such that uh, my father was a faculty member. Okay, ah, and so okay. at what uh, discipline? Just sociology, oh, uh, okay. sociology. That's all right. Yeah. Almost like a discipline. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and so at the dinner table, often the conversation was, you know, what happened in class today or what was happening on campus, and so I kind of grew up in that uh, environment uh, mm -hmm. near a, a, a college campus, and so. Uh, I, as I looked at, what, you know, what I want to do with my life, I uh, got to the point where I decided, you know, I, I think I'd maybe like to work for a college or university and What school was, this, was inspiring you? Uh, this, my alma mater, which is uh, Alderson Broadus uh, University in West Virginia. Man, he's still on the Latin, yeah. too. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, he knew yeah. what in loco parentis was, so yeah. <laughs> he already established that baseline. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the foundation, okay. I think, if, of my interest in, in going uh, going into the, to the field. But people could come into student affairs from a lot of different areas, mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, and my my route is you know based in my experience initially, but then uh, I went and actually worked in another field for a while. I worked in state government and I uh, helped to run um, arts administration programs oh, really? because I was interested in in the arts and that kind of thing. But then decided you know uh, do I want to do this for my career? And then I thought. Mm. I think I want to look at, at going into higher education and working for colleges and universities. And I thought, you know, I like the kind of experience that students get at a small church-affiliated, you could say liberal arts sure. uh, institution, 
because you're, uh, you get personal attention, you're developing the whole student in all the dimensions of their lives, and the kind of experience that you get to have at this kind of institution, I think is um, really, I would say, priceless, you know. But I know it's, it is expensive, and, and university education or college education is expensive these days, but uh, it makes the difference. For it's our, the difference for between students. a boutique experience or craft experience versus mass production or assembly line, in my opinion. Yeah. Yes. There's a lot more craftsmanship that goes on in a place like this. Exactly. Right. And and you can, if you're a student at a, a school like McMurray, you can uh, you can get involved <laughs> that first week you're on campus. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. And exactly. In fact, you're encouraged to yes. and begin to to find what's important to you and, you know, uh, who you are in terms of your own identity and um, and then get involved and develop those kind of leadership skills that we hope uh, college students develop over the time that they're in college as they figure out uh, what the future is for them. So once you made the decision to go into student affairs, and I guess that's what yeah. the field is called, student affairs. Yes. Um, what do you do? How do you do it? How do you break into it? And how do you end up as a dean of students? Yeah. Well, before you answer that, I'm interested in what your academic background was. I sure. Mean, what yeah. did you study in college? I, I majored in technical writing. Really? Of all things. Okay. Wow, that has no connection yeah. to student and affairs at all. That's and, the, and then I had a minor in psychology. Okay. Uh, that's oh, yeah. okay. And then in business. Okay. Oh, wow. And so I, I was the product of a liberal arts education, education. Yeah. and uh, it's a i thought and i still think is a great foundation for whatever uh, yeah. i wanted to well, do well state government or student affairs yeah and and it it gave me you know communication skills mm -hmm. uh leadership opportunities uh a sense of uh, understanding the the human condition through psychology and related sure. courses and all that uh and that provided a pretty good foundation uh for me Okay, so yeah. back to that original yeah. so question. You were working for state government, then you decided, now I don't want to do this for my career. How did you that, move over to student affairs, and did you have to go get a master's degree? Yeah. I had a master's at that point. Okay. And and it was in arts administration, okay. actually. And I've been, been working, I worked for a, a, a summer at the Chautauqua Institution in New York, which is a, an arts festival. In Chautauqua, uh, New York. Festival. Yeah. yeah, in Chautauqua, yeah. New York. Hey. Dang, that's and, cool. Yeah, yeah. And that's then, history. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> There's a lot of cool stuff going on. There's there. a lot of cool stuff yeah. going on there. And then, and then I, um, uh, I was offered a job in my home state in the state government through the uh, in the state arts uh, agency, right? Okay. The uh, the arts council that that is kind of connected with the National Endowment for the Arts, and it helps to develop cultural resources in the state and that kind of thing. So I did that for a while, but as I began to think about what kind of impact I wanted to have long term with my profession thought, you know, I think I need to be looking at education. And so I was like, oh, well, what should I do? Well, how about go and enroll in a doctoral program so I can oh. get a, get some training in this field. And so I looked for um, uh, programs that uh, uh, fit the bill. And yes. so ended up at um, Kent State University in okay. Ohio. Yes. Yeah. You're uh, kind of running yeah. along the upper Ohio on this whole That's story. right, yeah. And I, in fact, I was there on the um, 20th anniversary of the Kent State shootings, shootings. you know. Uh, yeah, so which, 1988. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, which, uh, you know, in the late 80s and into the 90s is when I was there. And uh, wow. so, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great time and a great experience there at Kent State. So, yeah. So you yeah. ended up getting a doctorate then? Yeah, then that, and that's in higher education with a minor in counseling. Okay. 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 And and so then after that, uh, I uh, looked for, uh, of course, employment opportunities right? sure, after sure. school. You need a job. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All this education's <laughs> got to be for sale. Yeah, there you go. And so I ended up um, at a, uh, uh, in fact, it was a United Methodist uh, affiliated institution in Georgia, uh, Young Harris College. Yes. yes. In, in North Georgia. In the mountains. In the mountains of North, North Georgia. Georgia. Well, he's from West Virginia, yeah. so he knows his way around a mountain or two. That's right. It felt, it felt like home, yeah. uh, right? And so that that was kind of the beginning. Uh, but while I was at Kent State, I also worked for another uh, a, a institution, um, Mount Union College, right. now University in in Ohio. And so, so I you know I got I got a pretty good background uh, for in small college work. And then you yeah. ended up here. And then after about thirty years, <laughs> <laughs> I ended up in Texas of all places and. 
Must have uh, been living right. Yeah, I I've enjoyed it thoroughly, and it's been a, a great uh, because I've mostly lived in the uh, eastern and mid Atlantic uh, parts yeah. of the country, right? Uh, and then uh, coming to uh, to Texas uh, was a you know just a new experience, and it's been great fun. I've got a lot more exploring to do. I've done some already, and the great state of Texas. But, okay, uh, and more how long do. ago did you come here? To I I will uh, be at McMurray two years in January, so it's about oh. a about eighteen months ago, at, more or less. Okay, yeah, very good. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot more exploring to be done. Yes. Oh yes, absolutely. And now yeah. we're gonna when we after we take this break, we'll explore what a dean of students does. Okay, right. yeah, oh. and, I, and I'm kind of curious too. When we come back from the break, if you can tell me the differences you've seen over time in college kids sure and then we'll tell you stories okay yeah class. i'm sure you've got you got some stories yourself, yeah maybe right? off the air when we do the break <laughs> right. yeah we'll kind of rehearse this stuff yeah. so we're not telling too much but yeah it because you've had this same sort of career arc as we have yeah and so that'll be a, we can all kind of sit around and reminisce right after this yep. don't skip don't skip don't skip Hello, my name is Christopher Bartlett. I'm the studio manager with the McWinnie History Education Group, and you may be used to seeing my name in the end credits, or sometimes you'll see me sitting here as a special guest host. But right now, I'm here to talk to you about an amazing new opportunity. We have created a Patreon! <laughs> To put it simply, if you enjoy the content on this YouTube channel, then you can head on over to Patreon, donate money to us, and become a patron. And through your donations, more content will be made. Basically, it breaks down like this. With $10, you will receive a short thank you video from Dr. Frazier and Dr. Fabrizio. With $25, you will be able to take part in a patron-only poll. With $50, you will get swag. These items include a choice between two prints of paintings and signed copies of Dr. Frazier's books, Blood on the Bayou and Thunder Across the Swamp. With $75, you will receive exclusive videos that will not be available anywhere else, not on YouTube and not on SoundCloud. These videos will be just for you, the patrons. With $100, your name will appear in the credits. See that right there? That's where your name can be. Finally, for $500, we will send you a signed collector's edition of Phil Collins' book, The Alamo and Beyond. Yes, it is signed by Phil Collins himself. And remember, for all the higher donations you do, you also get the stuff from the lower ones as well. So it's pretty cool. And when we reach our goal of $5,000, Dr. Frazier and Dr. Fabrizio will give you their own personal ranking of the presidents from worst to best. Coming from the perspective of a historian like Dr. Frazier and a political science expert like Dr. Fabrizio, you really don't want to miss their ranking and why they put them in that order. If you enjoy this content and want to see more, if you believe in our mission of making history accessible to everyone, then head on over to our Patreon and donate as much money as you're willing to give. You'll help us continue what we're doing, and you'll get amazing gifts as our way of saying thank you. Now we return to your regularly scheduled programming. And we're back. This is The Professors. I'm with Paul Fabrizio and Alan Withers. And we're having a great conversation about a different aspect of higher education. And if you enjoy our conversations on The Professors, uh, you can support our efforts through Patreon. We have a Patreon page, and the proceeds from Patreon help us pay staffers, which are all students here at McMurray University, and helps keep these conversations rolling. Uh, also, we're on YouTube now, it's maybe where you're watching it. But if you just want to listen to us without having to look at us, you probably can also a better idea. <laughs> maybe a better <laughs> idea. Or take us on your commute. Uh go to SoundCloud. We're on SoundCloud and we're also on Apple iTunes. So lots of ways that we can enter your skull, <laughs> both visually and <laughs> audio anyhow we, different ways to consume this uh excellent conversation anyhow we were talking about student affairs we need a script for this guy yeah we need a script i told you <laughs> that way i can do my radio voice all right so alan withers dean of students mcmurray university on this beautiful late october day 
<laughs> right? Yeah. That, yeah. It is I a mean, beautiful it, day. It, it is. It's the rain an stopped, and it's, it, uh, actually it's, the it's absolutely out. gorgeous. Right? So, you're the dean of students here. What does that mean? I mean, what kind of a job description do you have? A a, a dean of students on a college or university campus is a position that focuses on um, overseeing the different kinds of services and programs that support the uh, overall success of the students who are enrolled at the institution. And that takes, you know, a little bit of a different uh, perspective on each campus, but generally speaking, it's the kind of programs that um, uh, that focus on things like uh, uh, counseling, uh, career development, helping students figure out what they really want to do with their lives, and figuring out uh, how that they can uh, uh, can learn about uh, the um, thing that that's going to be passionate for them with their mm -hmm. uh, careers and their professions, that kind of thing. Uh, also, engaging students with the uh, uh, college or university and programs that will make the student or hopefully feel like it's uh, a place where they belong and uh, is uh, a good place for them to spend the next four years of their of their lives and and then it's a big question yeah yeah it is it is and and, and every university and college and university uh, it deals with that and and, and w needs to be making the um, yeah, uh, you know the the intentional effort to meet the needs of those students who enroll at that institution, regardless of who they are, uh, and and so uh, sometimes we have uh, you know students who are from different countries, uh, you know different areas, different backgrounds, and they bring different things to the university, and so uh, we need to be all about. Uh, uh, figuring out who they are and helping them to be successful with the programs uh, that we offer. And, and so I, uh, I work with a, a lot of great staff who uh, run the residence halls and where the students live, who, um, <clears throat> who operate the campus center that provides the programs that keep the students uh, engaged and interested uh, on campus, that... Um, uh, that provide the, uh, the uh, for the example, the intramural sports programs. A lot of students are interested in mm -hmm. um, in getting in, involved or continuing to be involved, if if not intercollegiate athletics, in uh, intramural sports, where so they can uh, stay uh, healthy and uh, and and uh, participate in the kind of activities that really uh, make it. Uh, a fun experience for them. So, th so those kind of things as well. It's kind of quality of life issues. Yeah, uh, I think quality of life for sure, and then deal with uh, the needs. Uh, if let's say they need academic support, mm -hmm. and and working with our uh, colleagues uh, who uh, who provide uh, the kind of uh, tutoring programs that are needed. Uh, also, a as partners with with faculty such as yourselves in. Uh, designing programs that we can work on collaboratively to uh, help to uh, um, students to be more successful. Like at McMurray, you know, the um, first year experience program yes. where, we, where we work together to make that first year of, of college a impactful and uh, uh, also a, uh, a great experience for our students to set the stage for the sophomore, junior, and senior year, sure. et cetera. And you're have, deeply involved in that. Yeah, I was about to say, have you done any – First year? I have in the past, stuff? but not in the last couple of years. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we've had several iterations yes. of yeah. the first year yes. experience. I teach a lot of freshmen. Yes. Because I teach American government. In the so, gen ed. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. I just get freshmen every time. Yeah. So, so why would I go out and the... purposefully hunt some up? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I understand. I, you know, we do um, historical trends, mm -hmm. is my freshman year experience yeah. class. And yeah. so this studio, is utilized every Tuesday, Thursday morning at 8 o'clock for these freshmen to come in and essentially present a program on some topic that they research mm -hmm. and they theoretically own. Some own it better than others. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but it's all, they're learning the, the technical aspects of it, the editing aspects of it. And I'd like to think that they're coming in as high school seniors not knowing a bunch of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden they're being taken seriously 
because they have a role that they have to fulfill or the team's project ends up getting gummed up. So, um, Well, what better way to uh, to learn with through a hands-on uh, process in a, in a, in a seminar class, first-year seminar class yeah. like that? what it takes to uh, to put on a program to develop a topic and uh, and present it yeah to, to a half hour show and, yeah and the beauty about our program here at McMurray is is we've got I think 16 or 17 different classes correct for the first year students on different topics that they get to choose from uh, an area of interest and they uh, get to experience that through their first year yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I let them choose their own topics in mine to yeah. present on yeah. so if they choose a topic that they don't know anything about and they can't present on it, then it's on them and not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and but that's, actually, also, that's they, also part of the learning experience. That, that's where the research and <laughs> uh, right. comes into play, right? That's right. If you uh -huh. knew everything about all this stuff, why would you go to college? You're that's here right. to learn stuff. And some that's students right. maybe come to college thinking they do most know uh, pretty much everything about uh, yeah. life. <laughs> a lot of times we disabuse them of that pretty fast, though. Uh you know, no, no plan survives contact, as they say. So <laughs> have you seen a difference in students? Over time? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I have. And, you know, you talk about the different generations, sure, right? right? And uh, and, the, and the generations have different characteristics that change over time and uh, it kind of migrates uh, from different kinds of characteristics like uh, uh, how narcissistic are, are the students and and how uh, Faculty. open are, the, <laughs> are they to, uh, and <laughs> to others and to serving others and that kind of thing. And I think we, we see more these days uh, a swinging back to social justice kinds of issues, interested in, in, in uh, serving others. I, I see that. Certainly, our students are much more uh, focused on technology. I think they have. <laughs> Is that a polite way to say they four, spend too much time on yeah, their right stuck their to cell a phones? screen? <laughs> they have four or five different uh, tablets or said the guys units. that are all going to be on right. somebody's screen or through That's somebody's right. yeah. phones. Yeah. yeah. We're not complaining about it. We're simply describing. That's it. right. That, yeah. This generation is certainly uh, focused on uh, on technology. Uh, uh, so I, you know, I think generally the that uh, things uh, kind of go in trends and change over time. But the role the role of the university, I think, stays the same, and we are all seem to be all and keep uh, wanting to reinvent ourselves to better meet those needs. You know? Right. We're going to talk about that right after this break. Thanks. Bear Leader Tours. Where will Bear Leader Tours take you? Everywhere. Paris, Bruges, Trier, Battlefields, Pearl Harbor, Pacific Beaches, New Orleans, join the adventure. www.mcwinnie.org Welcome to Statehouse Press, a nonprofit publisher of quality books. Statehouse Press and the McWinnie Foundation Press are part of the Texas A&M University Press Consortium, which handles retail distribution for several small but distinguished publishers. Our entire list of offerings, with pictures, summaries, prices, and easy online ordering, is available in our section of the consortium website. Statehouse Press is proud of its reputation for high standards of scholarship and readability. In addition to this, we at Statehouse Press have recruited the talents of individuals such as Phil Collins on his book, The Alamo and Beyond. We release not only Texana by contemporary authors, but reprints of classic accounts of Texas life and history otherwise inaccessible to the public. Our book list also incorporates the publications of the McWinney Foundation Press, specializing in the history of the Old South and the Civil War. We strive with our titles to make history accessible to as many readers as possible. To accomplish this task, we have recruited some of America's leading historians as well as bright new scholars. We believe firmly in narrative history, in telling a good story, and in telling it well without losing sight of the people who have made history and the events that changed the nation. For questions or business inquiries, please visit the Texas Book Consortium at www.tamupress.com. 
when you support McWinney History Education Group, you also support the many young workers who operate and maintain the company's digital operations. These are dedicated university students who handle many things such as filming, recording, and editing content from McWinney, as well as cultivate the layout and structure of McWinney's various websites, including its associated channel on YouTube. We are a nonprofit organization that exists from donations from interested persons and history enthusiasts alike. Donations enable our students to obtain a higher education, job training, and career bolstering skills. If you would like to donate, please visit us at www.mcwinney.org and click on our About Us tab to learn more. And we're back, and I'm Paul Fabrizio, and this I'm, here is... This here. This here. It's Don Frazier, and this here, Alan Withers. Alan Withers, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. betwixt the three of us, we're all here. We're all here, and we're part of the professors here at McMurray University. And we're talking about student life, and as dean of students, Dean Withers is responsible for student life. But in talking about the first-year experience, Don, you just slipped in something... Historical trends. And then you moved on. So how about you take a moment, because this is a real thing that people can actually watch. They can watch, and I think we make it available on other platforms as well, like SoundCloud and Apple iTunes. Anyhow, we know how to do that. So what this is is a program produced by my freshmen. And if you want to know what freshmen are thinking about, I have Two years worth of samples for you to wade through. <laughs> 12 from season one, 15 from season two by the time we get them all shot here in the next couple of weeks. And the topics have been everything from where did FEMA come from, okay, which ended up being a lot more interesting than I thought, uh, to issues in uh, public education. There's the episode on North Korea. Uh, and, really? of course, that one's remarkably obsolete right now. Uh, but these, I let the kids go and pick their own topic. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's got a little bit of banter between me and the kids, but it's them driving the uh, conversation. So this year we have one on things like bump stocks Oh, and the difference between semi-automatic and automatic weapons, just mm. to set the record straight because there's so much misinformation out there about that. Uh, we've had um, an episode on elections and how we elect people. I think that was last season. Um, we've got a lot of sports-related uh, topics because mm -hmm. we have a lot of athletes that come mm -hmm. through, as you can imagine. <clears throat> and I've uh, even got one on uh, coming up on you know where that steak on your plate comes from and why <laughs> that should matter. And so um, anyhow, it's been a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah. And the kids are a lot more tech-savvy. Uh, I'm, you, you mentioned that yeah, they come yeah. in here and they see all this electronic stuff and it doesn't intimidate them. They're very quick studies. So, so, so if you're a, if you're a high school student out there, you too can have this kind of experience. Yeah. At, well, not only that, McMurray, you can, right? yeah, then, watch our students and yeah. say, Hey, does, do, can I identify with these people? Right. Does that look yeah. like me or does it, you know, this is not something I want to be part of. And, you know, either answer is okay. But we're not ashamed to put our kids out there and say, hey, this yeah. is the product. Yeah. So how do we find this? All right. So you can go on the Don Frazier YouTube channel, which is where I park all of my material. Yeah. And it's now, we've probably got north of 500 videos on there. A lot of it Texas history, but also all the historical trend stuff. Uh, but we also have a Facebook page where we drop links to our YouTube page. Mm. And uh, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Okay. Very so, good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. So, Dean Withers. What does dean mean? What does dean mean? Yeah. Why, 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 why are you called a dean of students? What, is, what does that mean? Where did that word come from? Well, that that's, um, kind of brings to mind the, uh, the part of the job that uh, most people identify dean of students with, and that is conduct. Right. Oh. You know? And in other words, de dean of the, uh, the, the behavioral uh, uh, aspect of the, uh, the college experience. And so every college has what you call a code of student conduct, which is, is, is essentially a, um, a contract between the institution and the student that has to do with the expectations. You know, you're joining this community 
and we have some expectations of you in terms of how we conduct ourselves. Don't and break things. Don't burn things yeah. down. Yeah, don't I hurt each other. Respect Treat each, each other, other with yeah. respect. Yeah. You know, use like civility yeah. and when you're... Uh, when you're talking with people and relating to people and and those kind of things, and so man, we could use that nationwide. Yeah, I we should have a code of conduct, <laughs> national code of conduct. Right, and you know another aspect of what what we need to be about, I think, in educating students sure. is is what that what that means and what that's all about. Uh, uh, when uh, you are in a community interacting with other people and. Um, and so that so the so the dean often is involved with uh, if there are violations of that code of co student conduct would be involved with that or a staff uh, in in the student affairs area to uh, so, so when you hear the word the dean mm -hmm. you think of conduct is is what you're saying right yeah but that is only a small part of it is your right. job you have a much broader yeah area that you have to focus on. And the, the way I would describe that would be uh, uh, dean of students and the staff within the student affairs division to focus on student development, student development and student success, and 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 that is um, the, uh, the uh, looking at the uh, student as as a whole person, and we all have different uh, dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, our intellectual aspect of our lives, the emotional, spiritual. Um, physical, all these different parts of who we are in, in college, we want students to be able to explore uh, those areas. And our staff, staff helps to facilitate that. And a dean of students helps to kind of oversee the, uh, the way an institution uh, addresses those different areas and the kind of opportunities that they present for students to, uh, to learn outside of the classroom. Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. we handle the classroom, and you handle everything else. Yeah, more or except less. For, <laughs> except for athletics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more or less. That's kind of it. Yeah, because yeah, okay. not everything that happens at a university happens in the classroom. Boy, is in that fact, true. We're right, just right. one little mm -hmm. slice of it, and there's a much larger slice, as it turns out, yeah. that probably and, runs across your desk. And it's all all the more important, I think, that, uh, that we work together like we do at, at McMurray University on uh, – on a student's experience, and that that we're uh, it's kind of a, a give and take in terms of uh, of how we uh, work with our students and develop programs that uh, uh, that focus on their needs. So, does food so, service fall under your valley Uh We we work with food service, but uh, but at most institutions, food service isn't what you call an auxiliary service. Okay. In other words, the college or university hires a company that's specialized in in uh, campus dining yes. brings them on campus to offer that service uh, and so that comes through actually our finance administration area hmm. but we are really close partners with the uh, the food service director and so as you know when, when you're talking about uh, programs and events on campus if you provide food people, yeah, if people you cook will it, come, they will come yes. people will come and so we work together all the time uh, on on different uh, aspects of the programs that we offer uh, to uh, to attract students to uh, whether that's a wing night or a pizza or whatever it yeah, is steak to, night steak night yeah, all those I'm, kind of things. My wife looks forward to the uh, uh, turkey and dressing that comes up right before Thanksgiving. Yeah, time. they actually yeah. throw down a pretty good Thanksgiving meal that's right. at our. Uh, yeah, we always have we always have special meals during the semester like that one, and then one uh, cool thing that we do is the uh, uh, right before um, finals we do the late night breakfast yeah. where we mm -hmm. uh, we serve uh, you know an evening breakfast and the faculty staff come and help serve. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 interesting to me because food service is a huge factor in choosing a school as a right. Yeah, right. I yeah, right. Yeah, no idea. Now when I took my kids on the college safari. Uh, we went to schools that have very, you know, huge reputations out there, and you can buy their logo apparel at Walmart, so mm -hmm, therefore they must be mm -hmm. great. Um, but one of them, <laughs> now look at me, I can eat anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the schools had such bad food that I couldn't even come close to finishing it. Really? Yeah. Right. And it was yeah. a really fancy school, too. I mean, it had great curb appeal, and had a reputation for being kind of a she-she school. 
And, and then, man, they said, well, here, we'll let you run through the line and you can, you know, see how the sample, and, sample the fair, like, right? Yeah. My, my daughter yeah. is a, is a student here and she went to an MSG meeting a little while ago. And part of the That's MSG. That's not mono student. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The, the, our, that is our student McMurray government. Student government. Yeah, good, good. Right. And um, so she was there and she said one of the key parts of the student government meeting was a discussion of issues that come up regarding the food. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there was an issue regarding ice cream. And should you use the ice cream <laughs> cones or the bowls? And, right. Uh, yeah. She said this was the major theme of the MSG what meeting. What do the students what want? The, right. What do the students want? Yeah. And it's, I thought it was interesting because it combines different parts of what you do yeah, as yeah. the dean of students. Yeah. Here. Well, well, one of the things that I do, uh, along with a faculty member, is advise our student government. And so we meet every Monday at six o'clock, and it, uh, and there are always a time at the meeting with uh, student concerns, and that's uh, thrown out, and it can be anything under the sun that is of concern on campus. And so <laughs> interesting things come up. Some Boom. informed <laughs> concerns and some right. uninformed <laughs> concerns. Yeah. Well, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's like a learning laboratory. Like we have our chemistry lab, our biology lab. Yeah. We have our student government, which is a, a, a laboratory in, in leadership it and sure how to get things accomplished. What is the proper way to do that? How to present an issue and then follow it through? And they have real responsibility there, including a lot of the planning for homecoming. So, Absolutely. So right. it's, it's, yeah. it's a really important job, actually, on yeah. this campus. And the university provides uh, uh, funding f for uh, student government to use, and they make decisions about student organization funding, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Fine. So we got a little MSG. <laughs> and with our food service. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a break. And then when we come back, we'll kind of wrap up our conversations about what all you do right after this break. History has become one of the most fought over battlegrounds in terms of shifting people's views and opinions about their country. In response to this, we have decided to launch a website called GoToHistory that will become your home for clear-eyed history content. Our objective is to put history out there free of agendas and allow you, the viewers, to decide what you believe and decide how to interpret this information. With experienced professors such as Dr. Don Frazier and Dr. Stephen Harden teaching courses and creating agenda-free content for students and just plain history enthusiasts, the content of GoToHistory is vastly informative and unbiased. Hey history people, it's Phil Collins here. I am just giving a shout out to a couple of guys that you're going to be hearing from. Uh, and they're good friends of mine, but they're also incredibly knowledgeable historians. Dr. Donald Frazier and Dr. Stephen Hart. Both great friends of mine, both helped me out with my book on the Alamo. And two guys, if you don't know uh, much about history, these are the first two guys you should go to. Okay, what they don't know isn't worth knowing. Don Frazier, Steve Hart, and I hope you enjoy their presentations. My name is Evan Williams, a history major at McMurray University, and I love the layout of the GoTo website. I mean, it is singularly built from the ground up with user convenience in mind. Every study available is within a single courses tab, with each lesson having a single page for each of its individual videos, text, visuals, and quizzes, all at easy grasp. This is most definitely history made simple. Please log on to www.gotohistory.com. This portion of the show is reserved for advertisements. If you are interested in filling this portion with ads for your business, please call 325-793-4686 or email director at tfhcc.com. And we're back. You're watching The Professors, or you may be listening to The Professors, our program about higher education and all the different things we encounter. Uh, you can catch us on uh, iTunes, Apple iTunes. You can catch us on SoundCloud. You can catch us on YouTube. And you can support us on Patreon. 
So there you go. There you go. All right. I'm Paul Fabrizio, Don Frazier, and our Dean of Students, Alan Withers. He's our guest today. We're delighted you're here. Great to be here. This, so, is, this is the longest conversation I've ever had with a dean of students. Right. Way, so. <laughs> really? Yeah. Those disciplinary ones. Except you had? when you were in school. I we went to an enormous Congress? state yeah. university. Yeah. Man, yeah. it was so yeah. easy to just disappear into the. You mass. didn't know who the dean of students was. I had was. no I, idea I, that I, one even existed. I I knew when I was at college that one existed, but had no connection with the person at all. Yeah. 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 And that yeah. person could have walked by me and. Yeah, you wouldn't know him from Adam's yeah. off off. Yeah, exactly. So. If there's someone out there who's watching this, listening mm -hmm. to this, and they're interested in coming to McMurray, what is your message as dean of students to them? Well, one of the things that I always talk about when I uh, when I meet with uh, parents and families that are you know looking at McMurray as a place for um, uh, college is what we do for students, and I always say we equip. Uh, students with different things and things that I think are unique that we can uh, offer in a small environment where we have personal attention and we have I believe, and I'm not just saying this because you're in in the room. Okay. Van and you have no reason to suck and, up to us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have fantastic faculty. We do have fantastic faculty. We do. We really do. I like you. If we say so ourselves. Right? I like but, you too. But we'll the kind of experience that, that students can have uh, in getting to know with faculty and having conversations outside the classroom, a time, a time with people that care about them, whether that's a faculty member or, or a staff member. And in, on the staff side, we're focused on things like uh, equipping them for, uh, for leadership in terms of those kind of experiences. Um, involvement, we're, we're all about involvement. A student that is connected in the first um, couple of months of their college experience and have a positive experience are more likely to stay and in the end graduate. Yeah, matriculate successfully. Uh, right. And we do that, I think, uh, in a fantastic way at McMurray because, uh, like you said, in your experience at a large institution, you probably didn't know who the people were that were running the programs at the university. Here, you see them every day. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right? And as a dean of students, I, uh, I interact with students uh, all the time, and, uh, and I can have a, an opportunity to, to hear from them and listen to what they have to say and then respond to those needs. And then the other thing I think we do really well at um, Emmy Murray is, um, is equip students with an ethic of service. Hmm. Uh, and, Interesting. Uh, in uh, understanding uh, the importance of serving others and uh, of uh, a life of, uh, of service. It's not just about what you can do for me and the kind of money that I can make eventually. Yeah. Uh, I um, want the credentialing, but yeah. don't bother me with the education. So we have that, but also the importance of, uh, of uh, a life of service and, and serving others is something that we uh, certainly equip students with uh, uh, at McMurray. Uh, and it's that, it's that um, uh, we can afford uh, the, uh, the personal attention uh, because we're not dealing with 60,000 students. Right. right. Um, uh, your average class size is what? 12? Uh, yeah, about 12, 13 for me. Yeah. 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 So, and, I mean, you can't hide. Yeah. So if you're looking for a school where you can hide, this is, this probably, is not it. This is probably <laughs> not it. And I think there are some students that get tired of seeing the dean on campus, <laughs> or their professors right. texting them or emailing them saying, "Hey, how exactly. can you work in class?" Right. Yes. Something I just did. Yes, I'm about to say this is very autobiographical. <laughs> That's right. And I think that whether you're faculty or staff member at McMurray, uh, to a person. Uh, you care about students, you care about their experience, and you're, you're passionate about what you do. And uh, what we do in developing students, I, I like to say, transforms student lives. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think this, the experience here does that. I, okay. I like to think that we train them for the corner office and not the cubicle. That's right. Yeah. 
feel free to use that, gentlemen. Okay. <laughs> because it's got all the aspects of, you know, yeah. being a servant leader, but right. also a leader. Right. Yeah. And things like that. So. And, and also that has elements of teaching people how to think. Correct. And that is hugely important in society. You know, you talked about the role of technology. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, what we on the faculty side have had to deal with is our students can get access to much more information than they could when we started teaching. You got the wealth of the universe, knowledge but, of the universe. On but do right. they know right. how to think? Are yeah. they how wise do, enough to use it? Yeah. How, how do you process all this yeah. stuff? Yeah. And that's really, I think, what we focus on in the classroom. And that's what you all have to focus on outside of the when classroom. we work with you know students in, in leadership roles they're they're learning those things and they're learning how to apply that information to uh, to a task and 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 that's going to benefit them uh, in their lives okay. and that's the McMurray difference yes there you go wow all right we've got two minutes left yeah make your pitch <laughs> tell, tell us why we should care about deans of students and things like that you know do we need them? Well, you know, um, we're we're all about um, you know, focusing on what the, you know, molding that experience, yeah. right? Yeah, and, I mean, the McMurray that, experience is by and large putty in somebody else's hands. I mean, we, you know, it, and and what what we are able to create here is pretty is pretty unique and i think a dean you know a dean of students and the, and the student life staff have a have a big role uh and, in in creating that uh, that kind of experience that we believe is important for our students um and and i'm all about collaboration too and, sure. and you know and some some organizations, you know, you have these, you know, d different uh, offices or different silos. Uh, silos. Oh, the silos. We we are all about breaking that down and working together for the eventual success of our students, and I think that uh, that's one thing we're committed to here at McMurray. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm so glad you were here with us today. Well, yeah. thank you. It's been it's been a pleasure uh, sitting yeah, I, I, sitting I've, with you down with you and talking about this. I've learned a lot. I had yeah. no idea what goes on in those other buildings. You know, I'm just busy doing my thing. Yeah, and we Imagine. hung out with the dean of students. Didn't get any demerits. Yeah, didn't get yeah. our hands spanked. Yeah. Or it doesn't I, get any more cool than that. I didn't yeah. get my fraternity <laughs> thrown off campus. <laughs> didn't feel like we hazed each other or anything like that. No. <laughs> but we also talked about you know how we build an atmosphere. Right. That we can operate in. Right. And, yeah. you know, we talk about the, I think the unique thing about McMurray is the kind of atmosphere we can create. That's right. All right. Yeah. So, thanks for go. being here. All right. Thanks, for, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.